Welcome back, everybody, to the Oakland A's franchise on MLB The Show 23. Our priority today is going to be preparing for the MLB Draft, our second to the series, and we're 33 days away at the moment. Here are the top performers that we've had during our first couple months of the season to this point, with Seth Brown leading us in home runs with 12. And Teoscar Hernandez, the free agent pickup, leads us in RBIs with 34. In terms of OPS, Brian Anderson's our leader, but he hasn't played in a while due to being on the injured list. That's been uh, a bit of a concerning trend in recent episodes, as injuries are piling up. I'd say Nick Gordon has been one of the most important additions to this team because he brings that high contact skill set, he can hit for a high average. His defense isn't great, but I like that he has a lot of team control still left, and he should be able to be around, I think, for a while in this franchise. I did see some feedback to play a bit with JT Ginn that is an option for us. I haven't really focused on him too much this season, so we could. But our team leader in ERA at the moment, well, you can count uh, Abraham Aparicio and Mason Miller, two guys called up last episode. The last video really showcased Mason Miller in a great way, but Domingo Acevedo's having a good year, Ken Waldachuk, Nelson Lamette, and Paul Blackburn. So we're going to run through all of our remaining scouting sessions for this season. And we begin today's episode by barely scoring against the Dodgers. And then having Elliot Hughes suffer a torn finger ligament. He was drafted by us last year and now he's going to be going to the injured list. But we have a player coming off now in Luke Weaver. By the way, we just lost four games in a row. So what do you do with Mason Miller playing as well as he is? You can't just, like, send him back down when he's doing this well. I think in this case, we might have to put JT Ginn back in the bullpen and Luke Weaver back in the rotation and send down maybe Peter Lambert. And here's where we're at when it comes to scouting. I'm really interested here in Miguel Cabrera. Ninth on our board at the moment. The more we scout him, the more there is to like, it seems. Contact is his calling card, but he seems to have some good speed and fielding skill at the same time. We've been focusing a bit on those left fielders. Let's see if there's anybody else to make note of. Well, 29th on the board here for Luis Crespo. We went over him last episode. Another really good contact hitting outfielder who doesn't have a lot of power or a very strong arm. I might try to focus a bit more on a player now with a different skill set, and here is James Brantley. Now we're getting to an outfielder who does have some power, along with some speed. You just wonder if the power is really one of the only things he brings to the table, but I'd like more info. And here's where we are when it comes to the starting pitchers. There are a lot of very good options here at the top of the draft. Ooh, number six on the board, Domingo Gomez. 77 on the big board. So, the ranges here on the future side, we do see good stamina, walk per nine, velocity, and break, but it's all the other ratings that are below average. So, you wonder if that's really going to make him worthy of being the sixth ranked player on the board. Alfonso Montez, 13th on our board when he's originally unranked. Now, we do get somebody who could have really good walk per nine, but... Strikeout per nine, hit per nine, that's not where the, the ratings are showing enough promise for me. And here's a really interesting player as well. Not ranked on the MLB board. 56 for us, it's Patrick Haynes. He's from New York, 18 years old. And now we're starting to see maybe a bit more strikeout upside while also keeping the walks to a minimum. Home runs might be his weakness, but... At least there's a little bit more in the skill set, a little bit more on the higher end. And then maybe one of my favorite pitching prospects here, we have Henry Vazquez. And we're seeing a lot more above average to well above average when it comes to those pitching ratings. And typically when I'm training pitchers here during the franchise, I'm trying to do the training that focuses on strikeout per nine, hit per nine. And it's really important to a pitcher's development. So Vasquez will be definitely a priority with one of those second or third round picks, I'd say. So as we get down there in the scouting season, I'll probably focus a bit more on individuals for scouting. 
trying to just give myself a couple more options at some thin positions like reliever we went over a player i liked a ton last episode but i want to give myself at least a couple more options so paul siebel will make it to uh the scouting board i guess for this week he's a 21 year old and i think for these relievers i might even gravitate more towards the older prospects that just try to get more of a sure thing when we're talking about a player whose role is more minor like a relief pitcher i don't need the best reliever i need relievers that can be like 80 overall and not screw everything up i'm going for upside anywhere else mason miller helped us end this losing streak Pitching against the Houston Astros this time around, we win the game 3-2 and Mason goes 6, only allowing 2 runs and striking out 8. That gives him 24 and 2 third big league innings with only a 1.09 ERA. And our ratings are on the rise for the 25-year-old pitcher. Now, I did get some feedback. One of the top comments actually was talking about updating his pitch mix and the velocities and such. I, uh, I did that for Fujinami because he wasn't in the game. Like, he wasn't officially in the game. That was like a fan-made version of him. I'm a little more hesitant here for players where they're showing maybe a bit better velocity in real life. I guess I could look at some of their ratings that are changing in-game. But I kind of look at it like we start the franchise and then, you know, we're on our own path there. And it may differ from real life. And I know it's annoying if a player doesn't have like the same velocities and stuff because there's probably a lot less information on Mason Miller when the game came out. But I guess, you know, I'm open to changing like throwing motions and stuff like that. But I'm more hesitant on actual ratings because it can just have too much effect on gameplay. Anyway, Mason Miller's playing outstanding. Right now our A's are 25 and 39, but this year in the minor leagues... We're actually above 500 at both AA and AAA. We couldn't say that last year. Those systems look like they're getting a lot stronger. Pitching against the Minnesota Twins, another win for Mason Miller. We hold the Twins to just the one run. Nick Gordon against his old team goes yard. You love to see it. Miller goes eight, allowing the one. This is unbelievable. Could it maybe give him a chance at Rookie of the Year? Not yet, but I mean, with five or six really high quality starts, I think you start to think about it. But as you can see, it feels like our season is falling apart once again. We were around 500 for a while, and now we are the only team under 500 here in the loaded American League West. The fourth place team is 39 and 31. We're 18 games back of first, but we're 12 and a half back of fourth place. And that's why, my friends, we are focused on the Major League Draft today. Paul Siebel comes in 91 on the board for us. Could be a solid addition. And Miguel Cabrera, he's going to come in ninth on the board. James Brantley, 101. I think I'd like to continue getting more information on him, even if he's a little one-dimensional. That dimension happens to be quite important. And there's enough talent here to where I think I will go right field east for a little bit longer. But with Leo Akeda, I usually use him only scouting pitchers. But at this point, I wonder if we actually have enough information and we can just focus more on position players. So we haven't wrapped up the profile on Joe Michael, but that $10 million bonus demand has really kept me less interested in taking him because... After signing him to a deal, you only have $3.3 million left. So that 38, 74, 76 selections, you know, where are those demands coming in? Let's say, for instance, it was Mauricio Santana at 38. He's looking for $4.3 million. So you could not sign both Santana and Joe Michael to the same class. If you're going to take a Joe Michael, you have to take some guys you are just different than consensus on, like a Patrick Haynes, 252k. You can stack up a few of those players and get a whole class signed. What about Diego Dominguez? We talked about him a ton last year, 900k. That eats in to only 3.3 remaining if that's the route you choose to go. So the feel is that we go starting pitcher with our third overall pick. 
but we probably need to finish off a few of these profiles just to know exactly who that would be. And a lot of my scouting has just been focused on the eastern region here. So we'll go one more session starting pitchers east. And then weeks 13, 14, we'll focus on individuals. And here's an interesting player that I just found. We have an Australian prospect, Percy McGregor. And I love the potential of his hitting upside. We could have contact and power with speed and a strong arm. So, you know... A bit of a long shot here. He's 18 years old. We'll see with the scouting how good he ends up being, but that's an intriguing skill set. Mason Miller. This could have been a rougher game on the 21st. His ERA has ballooned a little bit after allowing seven and four and two third innings. So pitchers have these kinds of outings, and for Miller, it took longer than expected. And now Brian Anderson is eligible to be reinstated, but he's still going to be injured. So we can keep him on the 60, which I think puts him on the 60 day all over again. I think I'm going to want to activate him here. And he's going to eat up a roster spot, but I'd like to play with him the rest of the year. So we'll deal with that. And now Elliot Hughes, he is still going to be out one to two months. Probably going to have to keep him on the 60 day. But if we're going to have Brian Anderson taking up a roster spot, that means somebody's got to go down. And that's going to end up being Tyler Wade. And now we have to make some room on the 40-man roster, and we'll try to pass Trenton Brooks through waivers. And now Brian Anderson is healthy after a week on the bench. And we'll get him back in the lineup as we make our way towards July. And it's now our final week of scouting. We have wrapped up the profiles on these starting pitchers and have some really good options, I feel, for that number three overall selection. Hopefully Aaron Dunn is one of the faces of this team, but now we're looking for a pitcher for the future. We have three here at the very top of our board that could be options at number three. And I don't think it's likely Michael makes it to us, but also that bonus demand has just not been a great fit. So what if it ends up being Andres Nunez, the lefty? He's 21 years old, so you're a bit more sure about his skill set. Stamina looks good. Strikeout per nine, walk per nine. The home runs are his weakness. And then we have Luis Saibar. He is 20 years old, comes in 11th on our board, and he is another lefty who has less strikeout upside, and, you know, it's another skill set where you see the home run per nine, hit per nine, strikeout per nine, not really show a lot of potential. And so, I don't know, that makes me wonder, like, all right, if those ratings aren't good, what's going to make him play well at the big league level? It can't just be walks per nine. Now, that was looking at the MLB board. If we go to our board, we have other options here in the top 10, including Tommy Ye. What would the pronunciation on this be? Another lefty. Not looking for a huge bonus either, but the strikeout upside is there. The home run control is much better. So I would rank Ye higher than Andres Nunez, Luis Ibar. Then we have Domingo Gomez, 77 on the big board, and then he comes in sixth on ours. He did opt out of the doctor exam, and man, just everything but stamina, velocity, and break is not showing a lot of potential there. So these skill sets to me, at number three overall, I just don't feel good about that. Alfonso Montez, 18-year-old left-handed pitcher from Virginia, walk per nine looks good. And then you got Damian Dutzman from North Carolina. Yeah, I'm just, I see these secondary pitching attributes not showing a lot of potential. And, you know, it's like, you can't just look at overall in this game the way you can many others. Like a player with low plate vision, that's going to be a challenge for you to develop in the show. Same thing with an incredibly low walk per nine. Those players do not tend to simulate well. So... This ends up being more of a skill set that I'm looking for. You've got to show me more strengths to work with. And then you got Andres Nunez, who is just a little bit older prospect, so you're a bit more sure about it. So what do you think about our number three pick? 
Who should we end up taking? If Joe Michael is there, do you just take him because he looks to be that good? For Michael, looks like it's the strikeouts that are going to make him perhaps the number one overall pick. We wrap up the profile on James Brantley, and we do see the power looking really good, especially against lefties. So he's going to be 96 on the board. And I feel like we're giving ourselves plenty of options for a speedy contact first outfielder. So here is Mario Viegas. Contact is looking pretty good. Vision, discipline both in a good spot. And then you got that elite speed to go with it with little defensive ability. So that does hurt because I'd like, you know, I don't want to use a player without much power at the DH spot. But I guess that's why he's ranked 143 and would be more of a late round selection. Justin Odom, 22 years old. We do have some fielding skill here and speed with some power. You just lose the contact and vision with him. Man, check out this skill set here. We have Juan Yong Cho. And you see those numbers on the right side. Really good hitting prospect from South Korea. I mean, if you end up lucky in this situation, you've got a five-tool player. So it doesn't look like I can complete a bunch of profiles this week, but... I think that we're going to be in good position to hopefully take a really good pitcher at number three. And then I have, you know, those outfielders I've been talking about. And I think a chance to upgrade our bullpen. That is going to do it for our scouting sessions here in season two. We are approaching the home run derby and the all-star break. And before we get to the MLB draft, I'm looking for a game to jump into here. Let's see, do I want to sit here and strike out 15 times to Garrett Cole just so I can show y'all Ken Waldachuk? I might have to just get into that game, but before we do so, it's probably a good time to check on possible call-ups and send-downs. So why don't we go to the stats here at the big league level, and after our simulating today, Cody's hitting homers now, and Seth Brown has 16. So Bellinger raising those ratings once again. Still can't hit lefties very well, unfortunately, but building him back up. 75 overall. Trying to create maybe trade value or somebody for us to just keep around for a while. Teoscar Hernandez, 12 home runs. Power, though, those ratings are on the way down. Don't tell the other 29 teams. 12 home runs should easily clear what he did a year ago. I let Miss Diaz not doing anything extraordinary this year, but it looks like a trade is going to be coming up. Nick Gordon struggling a bit more in this episode with the average dropping. However, his ratings across the board are rising. You love the 87 contact against righties. I think I actually want to make sure I have his training set to defense because I feel really good about his offense at the moment. I just want to make sure that he is uh, a bit more well-rounded now because I think he's going to be somebody we want to play a lot. Now, on the flip side, you're going to have some players who are certainly struggling. And Lawrence Butler, Justin Dean, Connor Capel, basically the whole bench has had their share of struggles. Capel, 162, a far cry from his Rookie of the Year campaign last season. Justin Dean, 196. However, developing a bit throughout the year regardless. And then you got Lawrence Butler. A little bit up, a little bit down. I think he needs to go to AAA again. I'm hoping he makes his way back up, but he needs the time to develop down there and needs to play every day again. Ken Waldachuk, seven quality starts this year. He's a 71 overall, seeing some solid development Usually don't see pitchers and their ratings move a, a whole lot at once. Fujinami having a down year, a high ERA, and things just not the same as a year ago. Mason Miller getting a bit. And while JT Ginn has struggled, it's at least been, I guess, good experience for him because he is improving. Forrest Whitley's played really well at AAA this season. 3.26 ERA. He's getting that development that we were hoping for. Thinking about giving him a chance maybe in the big league bullpen. And then you have Luis Medina doing a lot of the same things. His numbers are even better. Under a one whip, 302 ERA. 
Luis Medina could be getting ready for a big league debut. Holy smokes, 18 home runs for Brent Rooker down at AAA. So he's been mashing out of nowhere. And it's funny because he's been mashing in real life as well this season, but he didn't do it for us last year. But just recently, turn that power on big time. Soderstrom's down there with 12 home runs. He's been getting a lot of good development this year. He's hitting lefties, it looks like, really well. Everything's getting a little bit higher. You know he's close. How about Josh Baez? We talked about how close he could be, and we just sent down an outfielder. Also, Tyler Wade is hitting 416. Just wanted to throw that out there. And Logan Davidson, he's hitting 325. So his big league play this year was subpar, but down at AAA, he's been doing a really good job. We go to the pitching side of things now at the AA level. Dalton Jeffries doing a really good job. He has that D potential, though, weighing him down. Cam Cope, seeing some development. He's only 18 years old. Be patient with him, but he's already a 68. Aaron Don is hitting 321. Only has two home runs. 83 contacts now against righty, 72 overall. I wonder if we start getting him some reps at AAA soon. Robert Passan up to a 65. That contact is on the rise for him. Luis Estrella. This one's been interesting because he hasn't shown tremendous power this year, so that's actually been dropping. I guess now I'm really wondering, when do you make the move on Soderstrom? Because he's starting to hit really well down at AAA. Do we think about it maybe after the All-Star break? I'm sorry, I'm going to make the boring call though, and I'm going to call up the 29-year-old prospect, Brent Rooker. We'll keep Baez and Soderstrom down there to hopefully continue what they've been up to to this point. Got to get them on the 40-man roster, which means somebody's getting waived. And I don't see anybody claiming J.P. Sears. And with the success he's had down at the AA level, nearly 250 at-bats, we are going to bring Aaron Don up to AAA. That team is looking pretty stacked now. You know, we've also had Connor Capel struggling this year. Maybe we make one more move. I think it's Joshua Baez time to get to the MLB level. He's hit nearly 300 this year. He's been close, only getting stronger throughout the season. I'm going to be taking Hogan Harris off of the 40 man to make room. 31 and 50 coming into this game. Oakland taking on Garrett Cole and the New York Yankees. And we're going to have Joshua Baez making his major league debut. We acquired him in a trade last year. I want to say it was with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Baez, 261 at bats this year at AAA. Hitting nearly 300, 846 OPS with eight home runs. A lot to like about him. And then we have Kenny Waldachuk on the mound today. 17th start of the season, a 316 ERA. Hasn't done a tremendous job with strikeouts, but he's limited the damage. He's been a very good part of this lineup this year. And let's see if he can do anything against this Yankees lineup. Oswald Peraza gets us underway in the first. Fly to right, and welcome to the bigs, Josh Baez. One down. Aaron Judge in the lineup when they get Matt Chapman. When did that happen? No one informed me of that. The former athletic playing against us as a member of the pinstripes? Gross. LeMayhew in the air to left field, and Gordon's under this one. Two quick outs. All right, here's Aaron Judge. 21 homers on the year, 44 RBIs. We'll pitch him out here, preferably. There you go. Top of the zone for Ken Waldachuk. Not many strikeouts for Waldachuk. Not sure we can count on one here. Ground ball to Jace Peterson, getting the start at short, and it's a 1-2-3 first. And now with Garrett Cole playing as well as he is, I don't know if I have a chance to do anything in this game. That's a 0 0.69 ERA with a .92 whip, but only six starts. He must have missed some time. 
So we'll see what we can do against him. Oh, I love that down below. Number five prospect in the organization, Josh Baez. He's 89 in the MLB. So that's who we just called up. And we promoted Aaron Don, yes. The news ticker stuff they give you in this game is some of the best I've seen in any sports game. Ooh, got one right down the middle. Cole throwing 99 there on the fastball. And he gets him on the curveball, strike three. But hey, it's my first at-bat in a while with Brian Anderson hitting 313 on the year and right back into that two spot. Trying to have him and Gordon be at the top of this order, set the table for our power guys. 1-0, fouled off to the right side. Okay, he doesn't need the help. And up the middle, nice diving stop at shore. Danderson is retired. What a play. And Teoscar Hernandez now with two away. Strike one. Yankees in first place in the American League East by seven games, and that's more of a two-team race here this season. Ooh, what am I doing fishing for that out there? I just saw one out there the previous pitch. Well, that's just nasty. Strike three. And here is the former A, a big part of their playoff teams they had just a few years ago. One of the faces of that core, Matt Chapman. Well, the Chuck misses high and falls behind the former A. Three and one. Here's a slider. Drilled to Bellinger in center. And he takes care of it. I don't know how Gio Urshela ended up back in New York, but he's here as well, hitting 270 and getting the first hit of the ball game. Glaber Torres, 276. Is he the one who made that phenomenal play at short? That was incredible. No, he's playing second base for them. Didn't see who was playing short. Snap the bat. Langoliers to first. Cabrera swings at the first pitch, and the ultra-aggressive Yankees get nothing in the first two innings. All right, Shea, number four in all-star voting here at catcher. I guess we could take a look at that and see if anybody's close, but it's the Oakland A's. What do you think? I guess we're guaranteed one, right, even here in the show? So, uh, yeah, send Seth Brown away on a three-day vacation, and we'll call it good. Maybe give him an invite to the Home Run Derby just for fun. Even though it ends up being the top eight home run hitters in the MLB that year. One and one. That's high. I just want to be able to finish this game and say, you know what? I gave it my all against Garrett Cole. Three and one. Fouled off. And he missed away. There's a base runner for the A's. So in terms of our free agent additions, it seems like they've all been paying off when it comes to the offensive side. Bellinger, Hernandez, Brian Anderson, all playing at a pretty high level this year. Oh, and did I forget Nick Gordon, who's hitting almost 300 or did for most of the year to this point? Big cut there, missed it. Like, I feel like free agency has been a huge success for us. 0-2. Oh, That's too high. Now, that is kind of limited to our position player additions, not so much the pitchers. Those guys have all kind of struggled. One and two. Uh-oh. And here is Brent Rooker. Man, I thought we'd never see him again in this series, but you mash at AAA. You get a chance here at the bigs once again. And when I see you, you know, top five in OPS in real life, you know, I, I see that and piques my interest a little bit at the same time. He was in the Twins organization. I'm a big Twins fan, so I've seen Rooker hit some homers at the big league level before. But uh, just couldn't quite hold a spot on that Twins roster. That is missing away. I believe last year or the year before, he was hitting like, I don't know, like first or second most homers in AAA for St. Paul. That's out to center, and that's going to be the second out here in the second inning. 
All right, Jace Peterson. I feel like I've liked his play a bit more this season. I've appreciated it better. I like the defense that he plays. But for sure, the offense is going to leave us, you know, hoping for that next third baseman to come along and maybe take that role. Hasn't happened quite yet. 3-0 and from Garrett Cole. He's giving us some chances here to get in favorable counts. I'm green light here, but not on that pitch. That brings up the former top five pick, right? Nick Madrigal. Strike on the outer half. Where was he drafted again? I know he was drafted by the, uh, the Chicago White Sox. Really high in like 2019 or something. That misses up high. What do we got here? Madrigal. Yeah, he was drafted uh, 2018 out of Oregon State. Not the Ducks. Number four overall. Into center. And not even having to move. This is one of my favorite players on the Yankees. We got Kyle Higashioka. Why is he one of my favorite players? It was probably a fantasy baseball related thing, but he does hit lefties pretty well from what I remember. But we get ahead of him, 0-2. I always thought he was better than Gary Sanchez anyway. Strike three. Everson Pereira. I don't know if I said that right at all. Off of Kenny, Madrigal's gonna try to make the play, and he can't. Give me a ground ball. Good slur from Kenny Wall to Chuck. Really good pitch count right now. We're at 23. If we get a ground ball double play, get out of the third with like 25 pitches, that'd be pretty awesome. Ooh, he went to the high fastball and he even fouled that off. A few in a row for Peraza. Strike three looking. So we might have to use 30 pitches after all. It's DJ LeMayhew ensuring we will. Former batting champion, two-time. Did it with Colorado, did it with New York. Doing it in both leagues is pretty impressive. Into left field. Gordon is over to take care of it. It's time for the first Major League at bat for Joshua Baez, making his MLB debut. This is big. I've really been looking forward to getting him up here. Baez left center field off of Garrett Cole. Gonna be extra bases out the gate. Baez to second. Welcome to the show. Hanging breaking ball from one of the game's best. One pitch. Get him that baseball. Just couldn't have asked for a better outcome there. Gordon to center. And that looks to be easily caught. But how about Anderson? Can he at least advance him? Pretty good speed though with Baez. You're feeling good about a single scoring him. I want to see Anderson get a hit. Hitting over 300 this year. Got to catch up to the fastball, though. Just, I think I'm sitting a bit too much for off speed, and that's when the fastball flies right by ya. It takes a little off of it there. That was 97. Missed away, and the count runs full. Oh, the fastball's by him. I don't know. These guys who throw fastballs when I'm expecting something different... We've seen it here today with Garrett Cole. We saw it last episode. Just like, be ready for the fastball, dude. Teoscar Hernandez. Well, that wasn't the one to go after, I don't think. And we're 0-2. Strike three on the curveball. And Garrett Cole leaves Josh Baez at second. Yes, expand the strike zone here when it's Aaron Judge at the plate. I appreciate that one. The old one from Kenny is right on the outside corner. He struck him out on three pitches. 
How about the development of Ken Waldachuk this year? This is pretty exciting. You know, I was targeting him and Muller as two of those, like, prove it to me kind of players. Wasn't expecting them to uh, struggle as much as they did last year, but Waldachuk turning things around. Ooh, I don't know about that one. Okay, I, I think we need to reevaluate the zone here. I was liking the strike zone about a minute ago. Two and one. Okay, this is getting out of control now. What, you give me one iffy strike against Judge and now three borderline all go the way of Matt Chapman? Go to first. You gotta be kidding me with this zone suddenly. 2-0. and oh. Finally. It's like the game saw how good the pitch count was for Waldachuk and said, no, we need him to uh, throw a few more pitches. Drilled to center. Bellinger plays it on a hop. On his way to third base, it's going to be first and third with Chapman in where he used to play for the A's over at third base. A jam now for Ken Waldachuk. It's Glaber Torres, strike one. Tapped it, and Chapman's just going to run into the out, and we're going to throw it on to first. What's up with the base running in this game? The CPU's got some odd tendencies. A drive to right field. Keep it fair, Cody. This one's back. It is gone. Cody Bellinger. Holy Toledo. We've scored off of Garrett Cole. Number 13 on the season. Been struggling against that fastball all day. We tee it up there nicely. one nothing A's. Anybody want to trade a ton for Cody Bellinger now? We got Brent Rooker at the plate. Ooh, still a little bit late. I don't like my timing on this fastball. There you go. I guess it's in play at least. Better than a strikeout. So now we're in that fifth inning. And, you know, I've played enough of the show and franchise to where the fifth inning gets a lot of attention from me. You can have a guy who's having a really good outing, and this seems to be the breaking point for a lot of pitchers. Gordon with a long run to the wall. Got it. Can you get through the fifth cleanly? That's kind of one of my benchmarks for how I feel about a pitcher. That's nothing like groundbreaking. Like, yeah, making it to the sixth inning is good, but it's just been one of those things I've been focused on ever since I've had a lot of pitchers that could not get out of the fifth. Higashioka to right center. It's gone. He does have very good power off of lefties. And he mashes another one here. 424 feet. A pair of solos in this game. One of my next questions I have to ask myself is, do I want Ken Waldachuk to pitch a third time as he hits the upper corner of the zone with his slurve? Or do I want him facing LeMahieu and Judge back to back? Finish off this inning and let me delay the decision for a few more minutes. Two and two to Peraza. On the ground, Peterson going to test his arm, but Peraza's too quick. I'm going to pitch to LeMahieu at least. Strike one at the knees. We do have Daniel Hudson getting warm, and in the games I've simmed today, he must have done pretty well considering his numbers have come down. And, oh, Peraza went. I wasn't ready. Ooh, he does go around. It's three and two. Can we get this final out? LeMayhew right side. It's through. Baez. He's throwing home. Got him at the plate. Josh Baez making his major league debut has cracked a double off of Garrett Cole and has thrown out the go-ahead run for the Yankees. All right, here's Baez. Perfect in his major league career. Got a really good stance as well. 
That's always a good bonus. Didn't throw a first pitch breaking ball this time. Missed away, and the count goes three and one with Gordon on deck. Could Josh Baez maybe become a fixture of our lineup going forward the rest of this year? Ooh, that's too much to handle. Three and two. Got him looking at the knees. We'll make a pitching change here in the sixth. Daniel Hudson making his 31st appearance. And he's facing the heart of this Yankees lineup. Not sure why I went with a warm-up pitch. But here is Aaron Judge. 0 for 2, and we got away with that slider. I'd like to call up another reliever. We just don't have that many in this organization. It's like 55 to 62 overall options overall. It's just uh, the weakest area maybe of this entire organization. All right, he expanded his zone there, 3-1. He's aggressive. Let's see if he'll go after a slider. Wow, scorched it to right, and that was on the outside corner. That's a great piece of hitting. That was an exit velo of 105 on a slider away. That was more impressive than some of his home runs. Oh, the bat goes flying, and an Athletics fan is going to have a Matt Chapman souvenir. And now he's late on the fastball. He's, he's in his own head now. He threw the bat, missed late on that swing, two and two, and he grounds it to second. See, he threw the bat, and that just threw off his entire mental approach to the AB. That's my story for you. Bottom of the sixth inning, and Garrett Cole still going strong. Seven strikeouts. Ooh, slider fouled back by Brian Anderson. That was a good swing. Do that ten times, you'll probably hit a few homers. Two strikes. Just got a piece of it. Weekly to second base. Ooh, thought that was a little high at first. Yeah, he's throwing stuff I don't even want to swing at now. I'm one and two, and that's the at-bat to this point. But that's Garrett Cole. Trying to avoid a third strikeout here with Teoscar. We send one into their bullpen. Yep, I mean, they called two out there last time, so I had to swing. Strike three, that's number eight. Come on, Shay. Popped up sky high to short. I probably should pull Hudson, but it's like I don't trust the other guys. A tired guy playing well or a fresh guy who's been bad. That's kind of my option right now in the bullpen. Torres fouled off. We've worked this count back full. Three and two. Hammer to left field, sending Gordon back at the wall. Oh, that didn't quite work. And Glaber Torres is into second base with a double. Someone tell me, when are you supposed to jump when those arrows are on the board? I cannot figure it out. I get like one chance a week if I'm lucky, so it's not like I can practice it. Ah. <sighs> This might be like the make or break Anthony K game. Dude, 378. This stuff is not sustainable, right? It's gotta come down. I know Higashioka's up in this inning. I could have played Stecken Rider, but he has an ERA in the sevens. Can we keep the run from scoring? It may take a miracle. Center field base hit. Torres around third, and the Yankees are back in front. You gotta be kidding me, Anthony. They're hitting 400 off you now. Nine hitting Everson Pereira. There's no way he gets a hit. Unreal. He might walk. He went around on the curveball. Like, what is it? Why are righties mashing him like this? Count is even. Two and two. 
That's for Baez here in right field, and he's going to get there. And there's his arm on his way to third base. He has a strong arm. It's just not that accurate. I'm leaving K in there. Uh-oh. Trying to advance to third base. Shea got him. All right. Do we want him to pitch to LeMayhew? Nope. 7-15 ERA, Drew Steckenrider. It's 11 innings, small sample. Pretty bad sample. Just one out. Oh, it's Peraza. That's right. I didn't get Peraza out. I got the base runner out, so it's not LeMayhew yet. So I just took him out mid at bat. Like I don't know what I'm doing here. Maybe I don't. Why am I fixing the A's? One and two. He went around strike three. Yes, Garrett Cole's out. Wandy Peralta's in. All right, we had one run and two hits off of Garrett Cole. Let's see what's in store now. Facing the lefty, his fastball, 94 to 98, throws a changeup, sinker, slider. Strike to Cody Bellinger. That's into right field, hit softly, but it's tracked down by the second baseman. Strike at the knees to Aaron Judge. I'm getting risky there at that first pitch breaking ball. Just told me a little bit ago that there are 17,000 people at this game. Is there really nothing else to do? Uh-oh, 3-2. I wish this game had more of an owner's box uh, feature to it. I feel like, was it the MVP games used to have that? Because I'm sure EA probably had that just kind of ported over from the Madden side of things. But I feel like having to manage the budget in baseball, where that's more of a thing. Down goes Judge. Like, it's interesting in football just because it was fun to mess around with. But, like, every team has the same salary cap and any team is willing to you know spend money if they're in a position to win all, all 32 teams will spend money in the nfl if there's a chance to go win but in baseball you know a lot of cheap organizations different budgets and i feel like a more dynamic way of managing it would be nice baez laid out that was not the right call apparently bellinger backing up the ball is into Anderson. It is a triple. Matt Chapman with a triple in the building he used to play third base. Baseball's poetic like that. And now hoping to keep him at third base. No, that was a strike. That's fouled off. We got a 3-2 count. Stecken Rider trying to put together a rock-solid outing for us. And he walks Urshela. Only arm I have fresh here is Abraham Aparicio. Haven't gotten anybody else warm. He hasn't allowed a run to this point. I'm only looking for one out. Strike to Torres. Doing a very good job with runners in scoring position this year. Lifted for Bellinger. And that finishes it off. Michael King is entering a 175 ERA. This team just doesn't allow runs this year. Can we go get one? Make this game interesting. Madrigal a little bit in front of it as the count goes one and two. Yeah, it was very early that time. And he skies it. Man, come on. Well, Baez has one of our biggest hits of the game. We only had two. A double for Baez and a homer for Cody Bellinger. That's literally it. We've worked the count back even. No! Strike three. Come on, man. Up the middle. Gordon base hit center field. That slider away like that, sometimes it gets me to swing more just because it's further out. And I, I just can't get a good read on it with two strikes. I'm just like, uh, maybe I should swing. 
That was a slider at the knees. Good one. Swung right through it. I was early on it, actually. And the same pitch. That time, not quite as early. These sliders, man. Well, we're hoping we can do something, bottom nine, as we bring in the closer, Domingo Acevedo. He's 17 of 18 this year. Really good in those save situations. Might look at the trade market for him, but I don't think I'll be in a hurry to deal him this year. We've got the 789 due up for New York. Good change up. Got him looking at the knees. And the nine hitting Everson Pereira. Don't get the call on that one. We have the count two and two. Got him looking. Great ninth inning for Acevedo. Can we go get one more? Clay Holmes, 23 of 24 in save opportunities. He's only blown one save. Teoscar Hernandez, Shea Langoliers, Cody Bellinger up in this inning. That's high, apparently. Ball one. This strike zone's been incredibly inconsistent today. That's in the air, a bit in front of it, and an easy play in center. One down. Last time up, Shea popped one sky high to short. Foul that one off, and now two strikes. And he popped it up again. Just a little bit late on it. That means it's all up to Cody Bellinger. He's the only reason we have a run so far. Catching the inside, strike one. Missed away. And now a two and one count. Sticking with the sinker all three pitches so far. Swung through it, strike two. And it hits him. Bellinger to first. And that'll bring up Brent Rooker. And we're going to make a move. I'm bringing in Seth Brown off the bench. This was an off day for him. But we're going to bring him out there to see what he can do. Tying run on first base. No way he fouls that back. It was right over the middle. That was a little too early. I tried to swing. And we got the check. I timed it up good, too. 0-2 oh, to Seth Brown. Missed. On the ground. Past third base. So a hit by pitch and a single for Seth Brown extends the game. And that's going to bring up Jace Peterson. Could a base hit score Cody? Trouble for Holmes suddenly. Strike one. And blew by him. The sinker at 97. 20th pitch from Clay Holmes. That one's low. And I don't know what I'm doing swinging at that. Man, so many bad strikeouts here down the stretch. Oakland loses 2-1. I'll stop playing when I feel like it. Now we're taking on the San Diego Padres, sitting at 32 and 52. Not going to see us play in Petco Park too often in this franchise. But we got Paul Blackburn taking the mound for us in this game, and we'll talk about his progress this year as we face a pitcher much worse than Garrett Cole. Just give me Seth Brown. And it's rolled over to second base. Paul Blackburn, he is 2-6 on the year, a 4-4-2 ERA. The numbers aren't great, and 
The strikeouts still aren't really coming up for him. If we compare his numbers to last season, just to see if there's any growth, the whip is worse, the ERA is worse, the war is worse, the K rate's about the same, a little bit more walks, a little bit more home runs. So this season's going in the wrong direction here for Paul Blackburn. Facing a loaded Padres lineup here. And he opens by walking Xander Bogarts. No, that is a called second strike. Back in the batter's box. Strike three, looking, you didn't walk that time either. Walk back to the dugout. Soto expanding and chasing a 12-6. Looking for a good first inning. That's for Madrigal. Can he make the throw? He's got some arm strength there. It's out number three. Cody up the middle. Hey, I thought those were supposed to be hits now. And that's down the line. It's Diaz coming in with our first hit. And we're going to try to hustle this one out. A one out double. No two out. Joshua Baez out here again, hitting 400 so far. Ooh, I liked that one. And that's strike three. I don't know why I've been so late on fastballs lately. It's, it's annoying. Wild swing by Manny. Trying to hit the moon on that one. 0-2. Oh Struck him out. Can we just talk for a second about how excited this man is standing in the rain with his hot dog? Oh, we're having a rain delay. 90-minute rain delay in San Diego. They don't get too many of those, I don't think. So I guess it's going to be a Chris Archer game suddenly, and we'll see how he does the rest of the way. Paul Blackburn was doing a fine job. I wish the rain had let up. So that is a rain delay coming after the top of the third inning. That's a lot earlier than a lot of the delays I've seen playing the show over the years. Struck him out. Nice start for Archer. Oh, it's the former Oakland A, Tony Kemp. He's sitting 204. And now maybe 201. Well, they're going to leave Nick Martinez in the game, and I wasn't doing much against him in the first three innings. Was probably playing a bit impatiently at the same time. He's here after a 90-minute rain delay. The rain was making it a little bit tougher to just see the ball coming, so glad that's over. Swung horribly at that. Brown skies one into right field. That was one to get a hold of. The fourth inning opens with a walk to Xander Bogarts. The walk he thought he had back in the first. Bunting with your two-hitter. You guys didn't spend... Oh, that worked. Soto, base hit center field. And here comes Bogarts. Has a car to third base. And the Padres start the scoring. Big swing there by Machado. Trying to limit the damage with Archer. And the count runs full. Wow, how do you take that one? They are loaded up for Fran Mil Reyes, who lands back in San Diego, who was traded away from the Padres a few years ago. Drilled the left center field. Grand Slam, Fran Mill Reyes. Slam Diego makes an appearance here in the Oakland A's franchise. Bellinger gives this one a ride. And Cody stays hot at the plate as the A's get on the board. 
438 feet, Bellinger Blast, number 14. They will make a pitching change now. I saw he basically had no stamina, but he was still in there, and now I get to face you, Darvish, instead. Baez smokes one to left field, and he gets a hit against another really good pitcher. I'd like to score more than one run in this game if possible. Ooh, Anderson through the hole. We now have as many hits in this game as we did in the Yankee game. Three of them have come here in the fifth inning. Nick Madrigal trying to continue the rally for us. And that is softly lined to third base. We'll go back to the top of the order and see what Gordon can do. Been a quiet episode for him with the average cooling off. Still like where he's at this year. Hopefully he can maybe bounce that average back up a little bit. Gordon left center. Too much air. It is caught. Right at Madrigal. So we got JT Ginn here. He is now pitching out of the bullpen for us. And he's been pitching a little bit in this game, giving us some uh, some good outs. But a 5.09 ERA this season. He's a 69 overall. So, you know, maybe he's a bullpen option for the future. Maybe if he gets hot, he can carve out a spot lower in the rotation. But this year, he's gotten uh, a lot of playing time. And it just hasn't been uh, great to this point. 42 walks, 54 strikeouts, and a negative .5 war. Basically, if we had more pitching that I felt we could call up, we'd probably have replaced him by now. But because we really don't, he gets a lot more playing time than you'd expect. Base hit Machado. Runner goes, and there goes the baseball! Reyes strikes again. Two run shot. Six RBIs on the day for Fran Mill Reyes. Where was your sign for the last home run? It would have been amazing timing. Like I said, if I had more options, I'd probably make a move here with Ginn. And you know what? I could bring up like a Forrest Whitley maybe. But here is Josh Baez, who is three for seven so far in his young MLB career. And that is knocked down at second base. Baez hustles out a second hit against you, Darvish. Continues to hit the ball hard, too. There goes Baez. Pitches away. Baez in there with a stolen base. And now Anderson in the left. And the catch is made. Hernandez. That's off the base. And he is going to be in with a single. Not a ton of offense from the A's in this episode. Just haven't hit the ball hard. And my swing's been a little bit off. A lot of late swings and a lot of very early trying to correct the late swings. There's Brown to right field. It's caught to end the eighth. Off the pitcher, Lamette. And Anderson can't get Tatis at first. We got Denelson Lamette pitching against his former team here. Manny Machado's turn. Wow, scorched past Madrigal. Base hit Manny. And here's a guy who's already homered twice. Fran Mill Reyes. Looking for more RBIs, perhaps. Popped him up behind second base. The count is full with two down. Runners go, and we walk Tony Kemp. Alfaro to Bellinger. And now we head to the top of the ninth. 
Next episode is going to be the MLB draft, and then once we wrap up that draft, I'll be going down to AAA and AA, talking about our top prospects, their progress, how close they are, and getting some games in with them. Between now and the end of the year, I'd also like to do one stream and then maybe put together highlights from that into like a finale episode. Last year, we kind of simmed like two months at a time following the MLB draft. And I think we'll do something similar unless there's something big going on. And that's another thing. Like if I call up guys like Soderstrom and anybody else... I think that makes it more tempting to spend more time this year or I could, you know, just delay their debuts until hopefully opening day year three. Down goes Langoliers. Cody right at third base and he'll be gone on one. Right up the middle, and his ankle blocked it. Alfaro makes the play to end the game. Padres win it 7-1. to one. The pitcher, like, he got hit and then didn't know what to do. But the Padres win easily. Fran Mil Reyes, player of the game. And for the second straight game, our only run is a Cody Bellinger solo homer. So, yeah, not the best display of offense, and that's why we need to go draft some, right? Next episode, we do draft the newest Oakland Athletics players. The A's are currently 32 and 53. That's a 376 win percentage. That is barely better than the win percentage we posted last year, which would have been 345, going 56 and 106. Cody Bellinger was the star of today's episode. He's now hitting 282 with 14 home runs. Pretty awesome to see him maybe showing he's still got that early career form. I mean, this would be his best average since 2019. And while he still might not be the same player, he had 10 war that season. We're pretty happy with this. But that, everybody, is going to do it for this episode. Let me know down below some of your favorite prospects for this upcoming draft. The next episode, I'll do my best uh, Get us a few more young guys that can help lead us to the promised land one day. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you next time. Have a great day.